A rare positive update from the Middle East, Israel and Hamas have reportedly agreed to basic tenets of an agreement that would see all of the Israeli hostages captured on October 7th returned home. Israeli outlet Haaretz reports that the agreement would last 35 days, during which all Israeli hostages will be released in exchange for certain Palestinian prisoners. Israel will also deliver humanitarian aid to Gaza. One sticking point, however, is Hamas's demand for a total ceasefire in the interim period, which Israel has refused. Meanwhile, as the war in Gaza causes an internal war within the White House, the Biden administration is attempting to tamp down on dissent among staffers who are pushing the president to pressure Israel into a ceasefire. Staffers angry at an upcoming, quote, morale booster party hosted by the administration released a statement expressing their, quote, disgust at the display of complete apathy towards the lives that have been taken in the region over the last three months and claiming, quote, when our children look back on this year and this time, they'll be appalled at the choices made by their forebearers. Protesters showed up to disrupt the party. Here's what that looks like. The Biden administration responded to accusations that the U.S. was now at war in the Middle East again. Let's take a look. Well, Carla, we, we've been working for a very long time on regional security and stability, not only in the Middle East, but around the world. And so we'll continue to work very closely with allies and partners globally uh, to address tensions uh, in the Middle East. You know, since uh, Hamas's attack against Israel, of course, we've been very focused on deterrence and on preventing a wider regional conflict, then we'll stay focused on that. And what about his words on the brink? Is the U.S. on the brink of war right now in the Middle East? Uh, we are not at war in the Middle East. Clearly, there are significant tensions in the Middle East. Someone else who has opinions on the war in Israel is Joe Rogan. Rogan and his recent guest, comedian Bobby Lee, discussed the topic on a recent episode of the program. Take a look. It's insane. It's f***ing insane. It's going to take over a year to clean up just the rubble. Oh, my God. But it's like 25,000 now? At least. At least. They don't know how many people are dead. They have no idea. And, and just the, half the population is women and children. And the trauma. Uh-huh. And the, you know, famine. It's just, it's just, I just can't even comprehend it, really. Yeah, and the Israelis tell you that it's necessary. And that they, they have to get rid of Hamas. And this is the way to do it. I thought that was a very human discussion, just disgust at the atrocities. The idea that this is self-defense still being pushed by Israel is insane when we just had Netanyahu last week saying, from the river to the sea, it will all be Israel. We don't want a Palestinian state. Members of the Netanyahu administration saying, the only thing we have to consider now is where to put all of the people that used to be living in Gaza. What countries will accept them as refugees? It's, it's millions of people. It's just disgusting. The killing is still happening every day. Uh, the Gaza Health Ministry reported that 200 Palestinians have been killed in the last 24 hours. 370 have been injured. Israeli forces are currently surrounding Nasser and El Amal hospitals in Khan uh, Yunus. This situation is only getting worse by the day. And it seems that Netanyahu is only ramping up his rhetoric. And for the United States to still be sending weapons to Israel is absolutely absurd. What's going on there is a humanitarian crisis. I think sending William Burns there, who's the director of the CIA, to negotiate, you know, hopefully some kind of way forward here. Uh, I, I don't know how successful things are going to be. I'm always wary of CIA directors negotiating for peace. That's usually not what they're good at. Yeah. Um, William Burns, as far as CIA directors go, is not as bad as the others in that he condemns torture. So it's a step up from wow. Haspel. <laughs> but I, I, I'm not super confident. You know, Haspel, of course, ran black sites in Thailand where detainees, you know, were tortured. It's just disgusting who we put in power, that their history has usually been using violence as a means to peace, not seeing peace as the goal at first. He was a huge part of the Iran nuclear agreement. So maybe he was a part of this, you know, 30 day ceasefire negotiation. Yeah, I remember when uh, when Gina Haspel was nominated for that position and it was like everyone was celebrating her as some kind of girl boss. <laughs> it was such an indictment of just that whole sort of 
third wave feminist narrative mm -hmm. about who we elevate into power and, and how uh, identity characteristics are obviously not a determinant of whether or not someone is qualified or, or should be put into a position. Um, I agree. I thought that Joe Rogan, Bobby Lee conversation was very heartfelt. It seemed like they both acknowledged um, the atrocities that have occurred, the tragedy that will result from this war inevitably, and also mentioned the fact that there's going to be this sort of generational trauma. Um, and it's something that we don't often account for um, in terms of our foreign policy, is what is the effect that our actions are going to have on future generations um, in terms of potentially creating new extremists, new terrorists, because they've lived under this system where they've seen parents, family members, killed by outside regimes, whether it's Israel or the United States through the funding of Israel. Um, I, I've been critical in the past of these White House staffers who have been trying to sort of strong arm their own version of Israel-Palestine policy over what the president wants, because uh, I was quite troubled by that trend during the Trump administration, where you had staffers sort of secretly working behind the scenes to subvert his policy. Um, I think generally that is not a good idea because you're subverting the will of the people who elected that person. But I will say that for them to hold a morale boosting party three years into the administra administration where they're supposedly celebrating accomplishments is incredibly tone deaf. And what accomplishments do they have to celebrate? Because I sincerely can't think of one. And to do that um, during, during this horrible conflict in the Middle East, as well as the Ukraine-Russia war ongoing, the ramping up of attacks by the Houthis in the Red Sea, I guess I can't blame these people for wanting to express their consternation at what the administration is doing. Right. To have the administration explicitly say, John Kirby, directly to the press, that they believe in a Palestinian state post-war. Then to have the leader of Israel, Netanyahu, directly say that there can be no Palestinian state post-war and we are still shipping weapons to them, it shouldn't be the Houthi you know, pirates, the Yemeni pirates seizing these shipments. It should be the United States saying, actually, turn around. We're not giving weapons to support a war that goes against directly our official policy as a country. And for them to keep saying, you know, we're not at war in the Middle East, we're not at war in the Middle East. It's all wordplay, really, because what are their actions? To, to pass a $14 billion weapons package in the House, and the only reason it's not moving forward is because it's taking money from the IRS, without members of Congress absolutely outraged that this money is going to a country that's in the ICJ for genocide. And the outcome of that ruling is certainly the result of the president of the ICJ being someone who is buddies with Hillary Clinton and was happy to help defend the United States in a case where they were convicted of terrorism against Nicaragua in the 80s. And so I, I think the whole situation is very ridiculous that the way forward for the ICJ is, hey, if you could just not do that, Israel, if you could just make sure there's no genocide being committed. And we have to pretend that these ceasefire negotiations are fair when you have over 4,000 people arrested in the West Bank where Hamas does not operate. Israel saying everything they're doing is to condemn Hamas and to get them out of power, when in reality what they're clearly doing is pursuing a genocide. And all they get is, hey, if you guys could not do that, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. And for the United States to put themselves in the middle of these negotiations as if the hostage in exchange for prisoners is a fair one, it just, it doesn't make sense. To me, this is a reminder of the general failure and toothlessness of international organizations and is another question raiser of why we're even involved with them and why we put so much stock into what the so-called international community says or what these um, treaty organizations say, um, because we see repeatedly that, one, other countries don't pay their fair share into these organizations. Two, we allow people into these organizations that are themselves guilty of human rights violations. I mean, we allow China and, and Russia and the like to have sway over uh, the, the human rights um, records of, of other countries as if they are somehow able to comment appropriately on whether or not other countries are abiding by human rights standards. Um, and I have to give, I mean, I hate to go back to Trump again, but his foreign policy was so fundamentally different than what the Biden administration is doing that I think it's a useful contrast that he called out the international community for what it was. It was a scam. It was a total scam. And he was, I think, the first modern president to 
suggests that the U.S. should either require other countries to step up to the plate, both pay their fair share, and abide by the standards that they're advancing. Otherwise, the U.S. is not going to be involved anymore. Yeah, I think the United States does a bad job abiding by the international standards that they sign on to as well. There's this American exceptionalism that, you know, when we do it, it's for democracy. When we do it, it's for good. When other countries do it, it's bad and terribly evil. Israel has been lumped into that same kind of moral thinking and, and structure of how they're going to defend themselves against the accusations that are admitted by Netanyahu saying, we want to absolutely get rid of the state of Palestine. We want them out of Gaza and moving into other countries. It's obvious what they're doing because their actions show it and now their words match those actions. So for President Biden to say, or rather have John Kirby say on his behalf that he's working on it, on having a Palestinian state post-war. There can't be a Palestinian state if everyone is killed by the time war is over. If the majority of the Gazan population is not on the land they were living on before, there's no Palestine. We're already in a place where Israel is succeeding in that goal. And if the United States really wants a Palestinian state, they have to step in in defense of Palestine, which I don't anticipate they will do. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> we'll be back with more rising after this.